Have you recorded as well? Uh, I believe so. Yes, we're good to go. Okay. Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode four of The Tale of Two Wizards, where we just um, sit, have a good time, talk about things that we have seen and um, share ideas. I hope that this will be uh, amusing and beneficial uh, to you as well as it is to us. So welcome. Okay, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so let's get started. We wanted to talk about light and dark. Let's see if we can confirm some stuff. Let's see if we can actually um, debunk some stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, what is light and what is dark? Shall we start there? Okay. okay. Do I start? Do I start? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll go. Uh, okay. So, um, as far as I understand, polarity uh, or this duality is one of the properties of our current universe, uh, meaning um, that manifestation requires uh, two equal and opposite poles uh, to pull one from either extreme. And then for creation or manifestation to take place within the boundaries of these two extreme poles. Uh, neither is better than the other. Both are divine. They are creation. Um, they are creations of the beloved divine, the beloved source. And so they exist in every scale, in every form. Uh, positive and negative charge, masculine and feminine aspects yin and yang, uh, light and dark, and so on. So um, these exist to enable um, creation and existence, full stop. And so everything is a mixture of these two uh, poles of um, creation. So just because something exists in relative light doesn't mean it is good. And just because something exists in relative dark doesn't mean it is evil. Uh, you cannot judge an entire race uh, based on where they exist or where they are born. And um, making a decision about their merit has to be done on an individual basis. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> The, the the thing is, a lot of people think that dark is evil, and it, it isn't. It's not actually evil. Uh, when we are born here, we got free will, and we can choose either dark and it, dark or light, or we can choose evil or good. It's separate evil and good. And the, the thing is, we we use I use oracle cards. I could be dark and use it. It's not the instruments we use. It's the person we use it. Like you use the uh, Emerald the ruins. Stone ruins. You use the ruins. Uh, but we are dark and light. We are both. So we can use either side. We can use it for dark. Uh, we can use, like tarot cards. I was using tarot cards at six. I was using the Alistair Crowley tarot cards. And if I had the set in perfect condition now, they'd be worth thousands. Because it was the Golden Oracle number one. <laughs> and my sister actually bought it me when I was six. And I used to read them. And the cards, you can, you can actually use them for like divine uh, divination stuff. You can actually use them for healing. You can use one card to remove your demons. And are you dark or are you evil for using tarot cards? No. It's what's inside your... Uh, I'll, I'll use it, basically. Uh, okay. And Yeah. And you can use it for good and bad. You, a, a, a light worker, a good person, can still do it for dark with intent. You know, it's absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the examples um, I'd like to share from my own work is um, crystal healing. Now, um, for um, people that are um, not in the same location that I am, well, of course, we use Zoom, and so. If we were in the same place, I would perhaps place the crystals exactly uh, on their body, on the correct locations, um, depending on which crystals called to be used in the healing and their general properties. 
but when the per person is remote, um, I use a little representation, a little um, mannequin that's used for training painters how to draw. You can bend the arms and legs and so on. And so I cleanse that and then tell the person this is representing your physical form. And then I place the crystals on this. And I would have to leave the grid or the crystal um, combination for 24 hours, 48 hours for it to do its thing. Highly, highly effective approach. Mm. This is um, as a result of the sympathetic nature of magic and healing. Mm. So when something is represented um, and uh, it demonstrates the form or a certain idea, then you can do work on that. Now, the same approach has been used negatively also. Uh, namely in distorted forms of voodoo. Uh, voodoo is not evil. It is a earth religion, very, very ancient, beautiful um, system of belief. But um, this same approach is used for harm, where probably uh, they pierce this vessel or they damage it or break some part of it. So the same thing It's not that the doll is good or bad. It's not that the crystals are good or bad. It's exactly, as you said, it's all about the intention. Mm. I, I've uh, I've come across the voodoo. V voodoo isn't, as you say, it's not that, but they call upon spirit, and it depends which spirit they call upon. And what what people, I I, I think it's so funny that people pay a voodoo to attack uh, an ex, you know, an ex girlfriend. So you say a, a, and pays hundred hundred dollars to the voodoo, and the voodoo will send. Very dark magic. It could be a, a doll, as you say, with oil. And you know, there's so many ways they can do it, and they can pierce it. W what the person doesn't realise is they are paying the uh, voodoo person hundred dollars. Who pays the demon? It's the same person with their soul energy. Yeah. So they get. They, they, you've got to pay twice. You're not only paying money pre. And the voodoo person, he's the middleman. He does absolutely nothing wrong because he is basically doing your will and your will is to get back at an ex, say, and you're paying with your soul. And uh, it can be as deep as that. And sometimes that, that, that's a contract. Once you pay that money over, you're doing a contract. And for someone like us, it's very hard to stop that, to, to break that contract. Unless, unless they're under 16, which I've got rules there which say, yeah, I can break that and I will take part in it. When I say under 16, it's very difficult because your intent was negative. Your intent was to get the vibration into that area and the demon needs paying. Uh, that's what I look yes. at it. Not many, not, not many know that. Not many know that. And yeah. it makes, makes me laugh when they do that. Yes. And so that's one of the... Uh, downsides of all forms of um, energy work or spiritual work where a person calls for assistance to another being. That's always a slippery slope. I generalize these, and I'm not a fan of generalizing, but in this case it is appropriate. I generalize these beings as, show, as, as um, um, loan sharks. Mm -hmm. They'll give you the money, but then they'll come kicking your door down for the original plus interest. And so... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's never wise to give power away. If you can't do something on your own with good, clear intentions, it's better not to approach it, especially when there's so many unknowns and loopholes in the non-physical world. People aren't aware of this. Nobody knows everything. So it's just a risky, a risky business could potentially be harmful to many people down the line. Um, so, yes, um, we talked about uh, voodoo and they uh, call to spirits called the Loa. They're not equal. They're a mixed bunch. Some of them are positive and some of them are dark. Um, and so, again, there is no uh, judgment on any modality. It seems everything is a mixture of good and evil. Uh, so we can't um, rule anything out at this point. Um, so let's talk about um let's talk about the um, the elephant in the room uh, demons mm -hmm. um now from my understanding these are very ancient life forms and many of them hate the name they are called by demon mm -hmm. and they're essentially fire elementals 
very ancient, very wise, and they are not all evil. Like mm. human beings, it seems that they have also been uh, enslaved uh, by the same system that is dominating humanity. So they are also mm. uh, under compulsion. Many times they are uh, basically slaves. They have to do the will of the uh, master. Uh, and this goes both ways. Um, humans enslave them. Sometimes they enslave humans. So mm. it's a proper toxic relationship uh, that has developed over the eons between mankind and the fire elementals. Um, now, interesting enough, I had a client very recently, a very ancient, very high-ranking fire elemental, uh, which wished to defect and what was preventing this being from evolution was the absence of the heart, um, almost non-existent heart chakra, and the offer of, um, let's say, defection was genuine. And so a ray came down from the beloved source, giving, an, um, giving this being a heart for the very first time. It was a monumental event. And then, of course, the legion accompanying this um, high-ranking being all shifted also. Um, we have other examples that go the other way around, uh, making it into, let's say, Abrahamic religion, stories of fallen angels, um, born in favor, and then through acts of degeneration, they lose their ranking and they descend. Mm. So it seems there's not just the polarity of light and dark, there is um, the same sort of effect going on vertically too. It uh, doesn't matter where you start, it's what you do that, that uh, determines if you're good or evil. Mm. There's, there's quite a few. There's also your own demons, and that's where your shadow and your brain are taking over, your, away from your art and your brain. And they, once you get a shadow, your own shadow takes over. Like It is demonic. Uh, it can be very difficult. Now, a lot of people say we've got to get rid of our shadow. No, we've got to embrace our shadow. It's part of the being at the end of the day. And it's it's basically took over and it needs to be re-blemished into the actual old, old soul again. And yes. also, there's also beings that are grounded beings that are probably killed or done something wrong. It don't want to, don't want to ascend. And they start becoming demonic over time. They start, and they're normally uh, they're normally uh, manipulated by proper demons into their sort of into their gang sort of thing. So it's quite a lot. I've got a few stories on that which are quite oh, magical. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one then. I'll tell you one. There was uh, an Eva told me that she was under a family seemed to be cursed. Every time the in the early forties, the feminine would go crazy and die before the 50. So I, I channeled into her energies and there was a demon around her. So I said to her, "Did you have you ever seen demons? And she said she does now. And she did as a child all around her all the time. So I thought, what is the best way of sorting this problem out? And it's to find, go to the source. So I went to the demon. <laughs> yeah. And I said, why are you? What's the problem? Because shame is like me. I only attack demons on this level that are attacking humans here. As far as I'm concerned, when they're in their own ground, I'm fine with them. I'll talk to them. I'll talk to them like me or you. And what he said was hundreds of years ago, the, this woman, a family, got hanged as a witch. And her last breath was to curse the family lineage. Now, your last breath before you die is probably one of the most strongest powers in creation. That is a contract. And what happens then is it goes out and a demon will be drawn into it. The demon cannot re release itself. It is part of the contract. It is cursed. It's cursed the demon, in a way, into this killing all family, making all family members crazy and killing them. So I said to the demon, look, can't you can't, I'll tell you what, he had black piercing eyes. He was, 
<laughs> you don't you, you didn't want to look at him too long. And I says, anyway, so I came back and I said, come back next week. I'll do some healing. We'll have a look at it. I say, but have you, is there someone that gone hung in the family? And she said, yes, there's a, there's something along the family lineage that someone got hung. So I said, right, we're on to it here. So I said to the demon, look, I want to cancel this curse. How do we do it? And what happens is the original being that did the curse needs to cancel it. So I went to the original being that had grounded herself. If you curse anyone on your last breath, you're not ascending. Because like, like uh, Casper, you've got something here to, to carry on, if you know what I mean. You're carrying on. So I said to her, look. Any way you can cancel this curse, you can go, go forward. Everyone can live normal. And she said she hadn't any life force left enough to cancel the curse. So I said, I'll give you my life force. You cancel the curse. And it all went. It was like a snowball effect. And the curse was canceled. And the demon said, I owe you one. And I said, well, maybe not. <laughs> and, the de and the demon went back to where it came from. It was very grateful. And uh, the woman now, I think she's in her 50s now. So uh, uh, I, I sorted her out. But it was amazing to negotiate with a demon. <laughs> a bit crazy. Oh, yes. really. And yeah. so let's yeah. call that being for what it truly is in, in, in structure. The fire elemental got trapped in this family's mess. And so, of course, it's lost hundreds of years, maybe, of its time. Mm -hmm. being drawn into the energetic structure created by a woman in her last breath. But there's so many parallels to what I've also seen, uh, to what you said. You must go back to the source of it. Yeah. And so another example that I've come across recently, um, um, a practitioner for hire, and this is 500 or so years back in time, in West Africa, is very jealous of a very beautiful, tall, young woman in the tribe who everyone desires. Out of jealousy, uh, she uh, curses this uh, young lady uh, with madness and also extends this to her progeny. 500 or so years ago, and um, myself and this um, esteemed lady come into communication, and she describes it. So going back in time, um, first of all, the human that did this was using a low-level attack, but uh, taking a numbers approach, sending many, many, many low-level um, parasites to uh, this um, the original young lady 500 years ago, and then those were moving on into the lineage. Every single woman in that family was suffering from mental issues. And the original practitioner was as dark as they come, not very intelligent either. So medium or under average IQ uh, with an um, obsessive compulsive personality where they just keep doing the same thing over and over, just adding numbers and overwhelming the poor people with their low level ritual. Um, and so in that case, the most appropriate thing seem, seemed to be sending the consciousness of this practitioner to spiritual prison and undoing the rituals she had done, not just to the ancestor of this lady, but uh, to everyone around. You mentioned the undoing of this. It seems that as you undo the source of it, there are corrective ripples that start spreading throughout the ocean of time. Mm -hmm. And after a few moments, the affliction was gone. They never existed to begin with. As a result of this uh, clearing, the first uh, message that was coming from this uh, for this um, client uh, were, were her ancestors, all standing in line with the garments from 500 years ago using natural materials and feathers and paint, very elegant, to the modern day ancestors were wearing clothes and still had crystals and uh, gems and uh, different decorations. The, um, the West African culture is so beautiful. And so coming, standing in line all around each other like a proper tribe and smiling. Okay, thank you, you did it. Uh, but yes, sometimes we cannot um, undo a contract 
unless it is undone before it starts. So you have to really go back to the source of it. There's no other way. I I went to uh, a thousand years and I went to their timeline a thousand years and the woman that got violently raped in a cult site, sadistic, tortured, all she wanted was an apology off the family lineage. And he apologized on behalf of his family lineage. And it just went. She went. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So every, yeah. as you say, every, every, even when these beings would have, would have lived hundreds of years ago, they still had that trauma sort of curse on their back. And everything just, it was like, it was like sea, it just drifted away. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. They just wanted an apology. <laughs> Sometimes that's all it really takes. It's the key to that particular lock. Yeah. If it's a genuine apology, that does so much good. It really undoes the foundations of this ritual or energetic working. It collapses down on itself. So that's probably the best kind of outcome one could expect from these kinds of healings. Mm. Fascinating. So let me ask you for some advice. Now, say that um, through the um, imprisonment of the practitioner that is causing harm to many, well, because of the free will of the client, we are doing the healing for this person, but many others also benefit because they have never been then afflicted by that negative energy work. So potentially taking out one bad actor in a certain location and time and space has a purifying and cleansing effect in a very wide range of um, uh, places and for a very large number of people. Is there a violation of free will here or was is that okay to do? Uh, I've got an example similar. Another, another one of my, you love my examples. I, I and Devin Rick were getting attacked by a cult. I'm not saying what the cult is. I, I already, 12 of them. And I was thinking, how do I stop the attacks? So because there's plant spirits, I'm very close to them. I don't need to have ayahuasca or mushrooms or anything like that. I can talk to them quite quickly. I use their power to bind the power of the cult. And when you see remotely, you saw the roots going in the soils, targeting them and then binding them. And then the roots came from their heart chakra and binded them. And funny enough, two demons were involved as well. So everyone got binded. But this isn't evil because the code was, once they emit good, the roots will dissolve. And spiritually we, we told them that so all of a sudden we they were imprisoned by their own power if they were if sending out good to people because sending out dark stuff to people just because of jealousy or something like that it's uh it's uh, they've already created the half circle so you you won't get karma doing that they've already created the start you're just ending it if you get what i mean so uh using the plant and afterwards i had to I had a meeting with the plant spirits, like the gods of the plant spirits, which were like tree stumps with faces in, and they wanted to know, they'd never seen that done before, and they wanted, to, <laughs> wanted a word about it, and they said, it is fine. As long as it's for good, a good intent, it's fine. And you're stopping them basically making things go wrong in your life, but and it's against universal law, so they're fine. But they, they thought it was very interesting watching it. <laughs> So, oh, fascinating yeah. Yeah. fascinating mm. so if if there are unintended uh, beneficiaries and so because free will and sovereignty is something that is very important mm. and we we'll try our best to mm, be aware of this and not violate anybody's sovereignty and free will mm. so if they are an unintended recipient of benefits as in they are not afflicted by negative magic because mm. we've taken care of the source, that should be then okay. Yeah, because we're not arming them, we're just stopping them using their power, which is against, the, you know, free will, but hold on, free will to arm someone is, is not free will to the person that's getting attacked. So, And yeah. so therefore we may conclude that prevention of harm, when mm. the intent to cause harm is certain, this is not a violation. No, no. At the really? end of the day, we, we're not making them ill. We're not uh, hurting them. Oh, we yes. just, oh, yes. We're just stopping them spiritually, uh, using right. their spiritual power 
to do arm basically so. like somebody is playing on their phone walking into the road and they've got their earbuds in and a bus is speeding you just pull them back hey dude you just got almost got hit by a car i suppose yeah. this would be the equivalent yeah, yeah okay definitely. fantastic yeah. that's good that's good and I've, I've probably just told them <laughs> oh well <laughs> stop using dark, dark magic black magic <laughs> Uh, I'm fascinated by the power of the last breath. I hadn't come across this one before. So maybe we could use this to a benefit for ourselves. Dear Philip, what would you like to utter with the last breath? Uh, I'm not going to die now, touch wood. No, 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 no. <laughs> when it comes, decades. Uh, freedom for humanity. Beautiful. Freedom. Beautiful. Freedom from the controllers. Some people say that you shouldn't get say they control the word. Well, they are. You've got to say what they are, basically. So whoever's controlling freedom from it, or heaven on earth, why not? That's even better, isn't it? I suppose. Let's see what I would like to. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'd uh, I'd go in, on the selfish route. Uh, there is no me. There is only the beloved, beloved. And so if that is going to stick with my soul, bringing in more divine light and being a more appropriate and pure vessel for that, then next time round, I could probably do even better. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Next time round, you're perfect now. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm wonky. I'm too happy. I'm way too happy. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm always happy. Uh, mm. Which is probably not too bad, but it gets uh, too much sometimes. People say, hey, dude, what's wrong with you? I say, I don't know. <laughs> mm. I like cheesecake and I'm happy. <laughs> exactly. Mine my, my, my a bit more creamy cakes, I think. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes. I'm I'm a great fan of them also. Mm. Yeah. All, all cake is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so now... Um, nature of ascension well um what happens when a being has gone through a full cycle of evolution reaching back to the beloved source they may choose to to ascend further right mm -hmm. so would they then come back and start from zero would that be an appropriate cycle just going through the whole thing again but as a greater soul with more wisdom Still, if they come back to Earth and they start off as a plant or a mineral, going through the experiences of what it is to be resilient life, then becoming, let's say, a small mammal, then a cat, a dog, a human, then going through humanity and then ascending to non-physical form, going all the way back up. Do you think such a thing would be on the cards? So really... Um, asking of your understanding of the nature of evolution. Do we go through cycles, going up to the top and coming back down again, like a car spring? Each full circle, we're elevated, but we still can gain more through this whole process. How I look at it, I look at it, we've got an oversoul, and it's 12 segments with that, which means that we have got, we can have 12 lives at the same time. Now, people say, well, only time exists on Earth. Well, I remember when I was a child, and that was that was a long time ago. So I, I, I believe in time a little bit, especially in this realm. So I believe that, yeah, we could live as a life, but that, we, we, the oversoul is like a vessel. It keeps all our aspects, our aspects are all like our experiences. So we could have an experience of a, a, a plant, but if we've already had that experience of the plant, it's already in our oversoul, so we've already experienced it. Uh, so slightly different to you. Why ex we don't just start again? We our oversoul is like a, a ship with all our memories in. It's got everything we've ever done. And uh, the good thing about us here, we can bring other aspects into us from that ship, and that's got all the memories. Now we can't bring the memories in our birth here because we're not uh, powerful enough to remember everything. We've only got twelve DNA strands, even though we're not working. When we were like ascended masters, we have 48 DNA strands. It's just too much. So these higher beings are in our oversoul, a good knowledge, good library to bring in. So would I? So it's slightly different than yours. Understood. 
yeah. time isn't real. It's all happening as we speak anyway. Yeah, but at the other hand, I don't. It's it's a it's a very complex thing because we did we were born. We're not born this second. How does that work? It gets complex. It does. Come. It's, it's difficult uh, for the for the human <laughs> brain to kind of wrap wrap the. I've, idea. Heard, I've heard that so many times, and I still can't work it out. I thought, well, hold on. Yes. If time exists now, can't I change the time in the past, or can't I see what goes into the future? It's. I think it's on a, like a different level. It's supposed to say, but we'll just see how it goes. I don't know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one. That's one to. Um, it's, that's a whole messy, messy, convoluted idea. Um, perhaps, you know, the mechanics and mathematics of dimensionality take care of that, as mm. you said, with the oversoul. Yeah. Uh, but being in a human vessel, trying to figure it out, I think that's that's a doozy. That's a difficult one. Mm. <laughs> Too complex. Yeah. I remember, like, it's my uh, 59th birthday in two weeks. Wow, happy birthday. Yeah. Man. So that's already that, that's already existed, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's happening now. That's how complex it gets. It gets a bit complex. Yes. yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, do you have any other amazing um, stories and experiences you'd like to share? Because well, these are nuggets um, of wisdom. Uh, this, is, this is for everyone who channels. Be careful who you channel. What you think you channel might not be who you channel. I was trying to find the uh, Keith Bennett, Saddleworth Moor. I was trying to find the body. And the problem with Saddleworth Moor, it is a shine to evil. There's evil all over the place. And they don't half try and attack you. But at the end of the day, I'm a strong soul, so I'll go for it. And I even found, I found in the, I think he's near the river there. There's a river going, if you go on the road and go on to level and travel a mile in, inland I, I took a friend which you know she had to wait an hour for me to so I, all these rambles i hurt my ankle doing it and i got to the river and there was a uh, a blue balloon now i'd seen this blue balloon a couple six months earlier flying it was showing me the way and this was in the river so i traveled up the river and uh i even found some bones that i took to the police but they were sheep bones i should have realized so it was weird where they were and I travel. I knew it was there. Now I came back, and I was telling Anila that I'm looking for the Keith Bennett uh, bones, basically. And she was in the uh, fourth, uh, fourth. Uh, what does he call it? She was in like the room where you book in for healing. And she's an healer who channels. I think it's Raphael or Michael, one or the other. I can't remember. But she in the room with the people there, she put my hand to a, my third eye and she said, Archangel Michael forbids you to find the child. And next minute, all my energy just went. The old lot went. I had about 3% of my life force left. It was replaced by dark energy. I was Ooh. absolutely a mess. I was a mess. I was healing someone after that and they became ill that night. So I was trying to work out what went wrong with us. And... All my guides were telling me, look, she channels demons that pretend mm -hmm. to be angels. And they, they, they knew you were very near to finding the child. And they basically tried to do a stop. So that night, I did a binding spell to stop her. And I sent a signal to the demon that if you come here, it's war. I'm going, I'm going to sort you out. You're, get, you're going back <laughs> to where you came from. She never came back yet. She'd been there years. She never came back after that night. Wow. So uh, when people channel, if it's not your own aspect, it can be tricks. So you've got to tell, but you can tell by the energies, but some people are so euphoric that they're channeling some sort of God or uh, angel that they don't realize this could be the angel of the demon. This could be a demonic angel. Absolutely. And uh, it, it, I, I, I never, it took me three or four days to get my energies back. Couldn't heal. I had no energy. Mm -hmm. I, I I was sending in dark energy. If I was healing anyone, they'd be ill, which is mm -hmm. uh, a bit weird. <laughs> so oh, yes. Yes. I, I I'd been locked out of the uh, forces that I normally use, but it took I got it back three days. So uh, that's what one you're story. Familiar with the with the cleansing practices and the strengthening practices, but still it took a number of hours and days to do this. Yeah, so when, when it, much, it, 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 
Yeah, the thing is, you can do protection before and after you heal. You can do grounding all that. But I was in, I was in the healing room, ready to do healing, and an healer took their upon us to take all my power, and they did. They took all my power, and it was a shock. It was something I never met before. Never met. Wow. It taught me a lesson. So. Valuable lesson. Mm. Yeah, you know these these. Um, sometimes it may take a while also to make the the, the determination, because um, many types of camouflage uh, techniques are used by these energies, mm. uh, especially the darker ones, like um, any predator in nature. Mm, they become masters of their environment. So if deception and camouflage is needed. Initially, they may even reflect the person's own energy back at them. Uh, and so the person will find that familiar and pleasing, even falling in love with their own energy because it is so harmonious. But then eventually the mask does come off. And it's really the responsibility of that individual channeler then to say, uh, wait a minute, uh, this is not what I signed up for, which is valid. And to cut the communication and contract not to get drawn in by the potential excitement or maybe promise of rewards because then they could potentially cause massive harm. So the lady that did this to you by touching you, I'd imagine she was somewhat aware of what she was doing, right? Bought into the whole thing, drank the Kool-Aid, but she knew she was doing harm at some level. Mm. Um, I, I, think, I, think, I think for that power, she was probably partly taken over, to be honest. Agreed. I think it was more than just channeling there. Yeah. Exactly. Point and fact. Yes. So much more elaborate uh, contracts are made. Um, a two-way flow of energy. And so now speaking about all this kind of oh spooky stuff, um, what's the surest way for a person who hasn't awakened gifts, who doesn't have a lot of knowledge, uh, what would be the best way for a random individual to protect themselves from dark forces, uh, the demons, the, the fire elementals who are really degenerate? Uh, what in your in your experience over the years, what's the best way? Uh, well, a good way is to cleanse a lot. And I've shown you the frequency video me and Sophie created. Uh, we're creating another one with 900 tunes on it. <laughs> frequency tunes some sanskrit mantras to uh, church bells to angelic tongue to light language all embedded into the song so that's worth playing once a day and that'll cleanse as long as it's not don't have headphones on because you want the room to be cleansed so mm -hmm. if that was cleansed into your home they'd run they'd run a mile they really well. I've, I've seen it in a an hospital i saw the demons waiting for the dead and i played it uh, all, this, all the people in hospital were looking at me weird because I played it loud and I saw them all run. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is obviously to protect, uh, go yourself in a bubble. Uh, another one is to create something in me. This is one of mine. Create a flower into your structure of the house. And that flower is Saint Germain, Saint Germain's energy, Saint Germain's transmuting flower, and that will sink into the root, into the structure of the house, and that house is then fully protected. You can actually see it grow into that. Uh, any other using crystals like you do, putting crystals in every part of your house and creating like a, a vortex field to protect yourself. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I know I have angels protect me quite a lot. I've met them. And they got a shock that they were protecting. How would you protect yourself? How do you do it? Um, I, I want to just confirm the use of the violet flame associated with um, um, Ascended Master Saint Germain and um, the Archangel Zadkiel. Very effective, especially for this frequency of energy, the degenerative fire elementals. Essentially, everything is balanced. As we started the conversation, Something that, and so the reference point is the heart. And so the colors of the chakras can give you a good guideline. So if something is going down below the heart to red, you use the other color, which is the color of, let's say, crown, third eye, which is violet. And this kind of collapses that energy. So violet is quite appropriate for degenerative fire elementals or demons. 
Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I think one of the surest ways, um, because there are so many benevolent uh, beings that are aligned with Source, waiting to assist, and yet they are prevented from doing so because they cannot violate free will, even if they're benefiting the individual. So the surest way is to call to the beloved source of all things, by whatever name we call, it doesn't really matter, we know what we're talking about. Beloved source, um, send me appropriate protection uh, for myself and my family, and then they are assigned by source powerful beings who are waiting in line, jumping over each other just to get a chance yeah. to do the work. I, I actually laugh because sometimes they're just waiting for you to ask. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. No great wisdom and knowledge beyond is needed, really. If you call to source, source will take care of it. And that is the ultimate transmuting, transmuting energy and the balancing energy. Now, sometimes you come across negative energies, again, below the hearts that are more of um, a resilient uh, energy, more willpower based. So the color is yellow. So then sometimes you have to use a turquoise color. Now, again, this turquoise has been used by uh, people of the desert over every continent because it's a stone that is um, formed in very dry climates. Uh, this is a very beautiful protective crystal. Sometimes blue crystals, like lapis lazuli, does the same thing for something between the yellow and red spectrum. And then sometimes we have beings that are of the nature of black fire. Just because of that, they are not evil. But the, gener uh, the degenerate ones, the evil ones of that energy, then require pure source light. So the violet flame is amazing uh, in dealing with fire elementals, but I've had cases where I just kept throwing violet flame and it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. They were so low down uh, that they required pure source light. So um, I think if we take the human out of the equation and trust the beloved source and ask for appropriate protection, that will be assigned. Mm. So, so sometimes Sophia flame, which is red, works better than violet flame. Sophia's flame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's funny, I, I but haven't... yeah, Saint Germain was an aspect. He's actually in my soul, over soul. And I never spoke to him for decades because I thought he was religious. <laughs> I'm not into religion. And one day while I was on the judo mat, he came up, he said, Phil, I was a sorcerer. I wasn't religious. He says, but I was full of religion around me. I'm not going to tell him I'm a sorcerer. I created, he created Violet Flame. He, source didn't give it, he created the source, but he had to lie a bit to the people around him or he would have been burnt as some sort of oh, sorcerer. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. How fascinating. Mm. These are energies that are available to everyone and it just mm. requires an open heart and to ask for it. Yeah. And so even the this um, particular example of the violet flame, you can just call to Saint Germain, mm. his creator or or, or um, rememberer, uh, let's say, bringing back to a civilization who had forgotten about it, the same eternal flame. Mm. And so, uh, yes, these are available to people. We're absolutely not helpless. Uh, the worst thing, in fact, is to fall into despair. Another way where just without any foreign or outer interference, one can be immune to negativity is to be in a very high energy to begin with. Um, your aura is strong, your vital life force is circulating harmoniously. Uh, quite simply, you're up here and the negativity is down here. They just can't reach you. Mm. Usually it's, it's within um, states of extreme shock or depression or illness or weakness when the energy is down then the person is much more susceptible uh, to being infiltrated uh, like a severe loss or something that brings up the energy of hatred and revenge it's usually in these events where an appropriate negative can attach so keeping yourself light-hearted and healthy and sleeping well you know what you go through your entire life and nothing of the sort will ever affect you i've uh not many know this. I've probably killed uh, thousands of demons over the years. And I, I have, uh, in my heart chakra, is God's sword. It's like, uh, it's like Star Wars, you know, the saber 
whatever it is and it grows for me at, on my hand and it can be any color and how i do it i cut the head off and i capture the conscious and i send it to source yeah and Ooh. i've done thousands now if you don't capture if you don't release it to source it can be rebirthed like you know they can be so i know people and they write my they write my name put it on the put it on the table when they go to sleep and they never get attacked again <laughs> my name my name is the protection which is it sounds ego to it's a bit egoistic but no it, it actually stops the attack so i must be i must be really they don't like me in wherever they come from <laughs> so, oh yeah. fantastic well sending them to source well i'm going to eliminate a single step from my practice i um, assign them to um let's say a spiritual prison until source judges them mm. um so i think it's best to just send them to source immediately why wait so yes, thank you so much for that. I just got an improvement in my practice. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so it much for that. It was it. Yeah, it's interesting how we we find the way. But I never used to do that. I used to, and that someone someone told me that they just get reborn. You kill them, and they'll get reborn, or they'll possess someone. Even worse, you're making it even worse because they haven't got the uh, they haven't got the body they were. Yeah, I have been saved by Michael a few times. That was me ego. I used to go in all blazing, attacking him. And one day I did, it was 10,000 demons, and he took me out because I, I think I would have died in this. I think my spirit would have gone. I, I wasn't I wasn't well on that one. <laughs> Another okay. time, a multi, have I told you about the multidimensional demon? I think so. He took me ankles. I came back with sprained ankles. But he was mm -hmm. he he was uh, he was an healer, and he'd uh, he'd put attachments uh, implants into the back of his head. And he could control him, and he used to make his life like hell. That was awful. There's one story I'd like to tell you, and this is a, probably a five five minute story because well, it goes on, and I've got I've got a sheet on the on my screen about it because this story started. Uh, my, my sister, who was my twin in another life when I was Merlin, she was my twin, who could understand my light language when I was born, uh, she gave me a book, a magical book, which I was going to bring, but I've forgotten. But I've got the sheet on the computer. And this magical book, my wife spotted a page, and she said, there's an ancient well in Sybil, St. Sybil's Well in Wales. Can we go? So I said, okay, let's go. So we drove all the way to near Pefeli in Wales. And it, it's like behind a church, and it's dead, it's dead difficult to find, but I found it, and I thought, I'll get, I'll get, I've get, i got a plastic bottle cola. I'll get some water. And I started getting the water, and I got nearly pulled in. And I held it back. I thought, what was that? Like a, a force. And I, I went in a judo uh, stance uh, to stop me falling in, got the cola, and then fell in head first. Not, I didn't fall in. I got pulled in, pulled in by the force. And uh, my kids were seven and ten, and they were laughing. They were running off laughing. My, my oldest now says she she pushed me in. She didn't. I got pulled in. Yeah, yeah. So we had to drive home. That was part. That was part of the start of this story. Uh, I, know, I remember my wife saying, "If she, I was in my boxer shorts, I had to strip off and go boxer shorts because I was covered. I got head first, so I was soaked." And uh, she said, if we need petrol, you can get it. And I think, thanks. <laughs> Likely do. So that was part of the story. Go back three years later, or four, three or four years later, I was on the judo map, and a, a parent was very ill, and I said, do you want me to do some healing? Now, I went straight into healing, didn't put in protection, nothing like that, and I was healing her. And she said, what's weird is between her legs in front of her, she could see a white light, like a star. I didn't think anything of it. I thought it was interesting. Never heard that before. Went back on the judo mat, started training, started feeling tired. Started feeling very tired. Went home and I said to the family, I said, uh, fuck me wife, sorry, I've got to go to bed. I'm dead, dead. I'm exhausted. It was 11 p.m. At 2 p.m., my guardian, which is a, he's a human and he can go into a, a dragon. He's a, a shape-shifting dragon from early times. He said, Phil, you're dying. The person you were giving healing 
was a vampire, energy vampire, and we cannot cut the cords. It's impossible. We've tried everything. As soon as we cut, they grow even bigger. She, she's taking more energy than you can replenish. So I, I've got somewhere to go, and he took me to the underworld. Now, the underworld is not like here where it's black and white. It's light, and it's white, and it's dimensional as well. So I was walking through what I used to call the yellow brick road, and he said, Phil, you remember when you were in St. Sybil and you didn't ask permission for the water and they pulled in? Be a bit respectful because you go and see the goddess of Earth. And I was thinking, I was saying, this can't be a dream. You're actually discussing an event from St. Sybil. <laughs> now, uh, but I, I, he was actually carrying me on the side because I was struggling that much. And all of a sudden I saw the tree of knowledge or tree of wisdom tree of wisdom and it was like a tree with a golden energy coming out he took me past that i put my hand in it actually because i thought it was a bit strange there was trees well there was mushrooms size of trees on the side which was quite magical and there was some you know elemental beings there which was also they were interested in what i was doing so i went past the tree and i could see a, the white sea of the underworld now remember i'd never read about this i'd never been there before i'd never seen it so there was White Sea and there was a goddess and it was like one of them, you know, them sculptures from Italian, but with a, a bowl in her hand. And she asked me to lay down in the White Sea. Now, I don't think this was water, but I'm not 100%. So, so I said to her, can I have some healing, please? You know, like, 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 you know, really grateful and everything. And she said, like, lay down. And all of a sudden she started pouring this, uh, like, white light over me. And she started saying light language of some sort, which had, it was a little more like angelic tongue, actually. And she was pouring this over here. And next minute, uh, next minute I woke up at 6 a.m. and I felt like a million dollars. I felt more energy than I'd ever felt on, while I was in this body. And I felt like that for a week. And uh, I was reading the book a few years ago. Can I sh share screen and I'll show you? Yeah, sure. One minute, one minute, see if I can get it. It's not that one, it's not that one. One minute, I've got a... I'm on the wrong thing. That's it. Make it bigger. Get rid of that. Get rid of that, get rid of that. I've got all... Just one sec. Go back on there, share screen. Can you see that book? Oh, yes, The Sacred Waters. At St. Sybil's Holy Well in Lithuania, when the sacred eel was remitted like that. Well, look above it, and I didn't read this. In Celtic tradition, the well of wisdom called Colonel's Well in Timpera stands in the center of the other world. Uh, I've, I've overdone it. It's this one here, sorry. Myths from many lands of, of the world tree, the axis supporting the heavens, the earth, and the underworld. At the foot of, or beneath the roots was, a, was found a well of knowledge guided by the three faiths under various guises or by the female who was the goddess of the earth and the underworlds. Isn't that amazing, that? <laughs> yeah? Wow. Wow. So it's actually on the same page as, as my wife had seen on St. Sybil's well. And I... Oh, wow. And I was talking about that while I was here. Yeah. But now, isn't that something? Wow. What What people don't realize is that woke, I, I opened, opened my mind so much because things that happened there were so coincidental where it linked from one event to the other event to the other event. The book was part of the story, part of the story of the two events, and it taught me to be respectful of these wells. That they've yes. got magic, they've got oh, magical yes. powers, and it's well keepers there. And it also taught me that this is an underworld that I'd never knew existed, and I only found that reading a, a few years ago, and that was a magical moment. That, that uh, oh, to be in the underworld, I, I tried to take an healer to the underworld, and at the at the beginning of the underworld is a, a golden gate with two gold dragons, and uh, the gold dragon says, "Sorry, no tours." <laughs> so I'm not allowed to go there unless I'm taking someone that's very ill. So, Understood. or if I am, if I am. So, uh, but here's a back way where the goblins are. But uh, that's a tricky way because goblins can be quite 
they're not evil, they're nasty. You look them in the eye and they, they growl at you. <laughs> so, yeah. So that is my story. Is that oh, a big wow. stuff? For the, for the vampiric attachments, I've found a different um, healer or ally, which is uh, Mother Kali. Mm. Now, I... equal, equal in rank, but of the opposite polarity. I love how this is coming together in the form of balance, in powerful and profound healing and liberation from both polarities, light and dark. Now, Mother Kali is, of course, so for our esteemed audience, just um, reiterating, she's the righteous anger of the feminine aspect uh, where mm, a mother would say, you do not mess with my children. And so once you are considered one of her children, she will do all uh, to protect you. And she is the destroyer of ego and illusion. But she does work with fire. Uh, so re re she's rebirth, isn't she? Yeah, rebirth. And so whenever I get my dumb ass into trouble, it's, it's, it's she that shows up. Mm. Uh, yeah, 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 you did it again. Boop. And I feel all this, all this lifting off. Uh, quite a fascinating ex experience being released from these kinds of ba uh, binds or energetic cords that are taking your life force. Mm. Um, so it just shows you, you know, you shouldn't be uh, judgmental about what they look like or even what um, zone of existence they come from. They might be mighty, benevolent, beautiful beings. And and so now it would only be justice to maintain this perfect balance of light and dark uh, to talk about angels. Can, can I just go one thing? Because you triggered yes. something, a memory. I had, uh, my, I had broke my ankle and I had healing off Sophia, uh, who was healing with dance which is quite amazing. I don't think I can deal with dance, but I can always try. And I had a meeting with Sophia, and, and I, I'm well connected to Kali as well, Kali. And in the end, I just wasn't there. They were having a conversation like me and you. <laughs> Sophie and Kali having a conversation. Mother God's having a conversation about life, which was quite amazing. And uh, a lot of people think Kali's quite dark, but no, she's rebirth. So sometimes a rebirth can be a dark situation because you don't accept the rebirth. Uh, but yes, yeah, she's, she's, they're both really good, really good yes, beings. Yes, one, one, one must wish to be purified from yeah. anything that is not divine. So um, mm -hmm. out of proportion, ego, uh, illusions and uh, mind forms, uh, belief systems, all that must go. And so mm -hmm. we make it dark for ourselves. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing, true. amazing. Oh, let's let's talk about angels. Let's talk about angels. <laughs> mm. So I see that you've got the name of Archangel Raphael. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about um, Zadkiel uh, associated with the Violet Flame and Ascended Master Saint Germain. You talked about Michael. So um, I would like to give the floor to you, my esteemed friend. Yeah, please tell us what these beautiful beings are. What are they doing? Well, what, what they used to do to me, they used to send me angels when I was 10 to fight. So I I, I was only told this a few years ago, but I've, I was getting trained because uh, I've got no fear. I, nothing will ever fear me, nothing, absolutely nothing. And uh, I ended up finding a, putting a alarm button on the back of my head. So I, I know if any negativity beings are nearby, he used to wake me up in my sleep and, and get me out of the trance of sleep. And uh, I used to end up working on the God Sword, which grows out of my heart chakra into my hand. And I used to end up killing them by the time I was 15. And they said most of the angels, not all, but most of them, they were throwing at me to train me up. To train me up to do the work when I was in my late teens, which is fine. Now, at the healing centers, I've had healers that say they could see wings growing out of me, out of me back. So they, they could see me wings. A lot of healers say I've got a, I leave a, a trail of silver uh, when I walk. And uh, people have said I'm, I'm angelic. Now, the one that I never really got on well was, was with Raphael. I liked all the others. I liked Gabriel the most. And Gabriel once came in the healing room with, with Joshua. And uh, I said to Joshua, I think I've told you this, uh, you didn't do a good job here, but I was having a laugh at the end of the days. And Gabriel was laughing his head off, and he said, you've always been like that. And, uh, like, I've got memory. I had a memory with, uh, is it 
uh, which is the Luce, uh, Lucifer one, Sangura, Sangura. I was, I was, uh, I remember one of my aspects, Raphael, was helping terraform Mars. So that's a good memory to actually terraform. And the one of the angels had uh, vapor coming out of the out of her wings to create water. And uh, so, and people said Raphael, and then I realized I was connect. I am Raphael. That's why I never used, I never really was connected to him because I was him, if you get what I mean, or my aspect was him. Uh, I don't use that very often now because I've noticed that I've got even higher vibrational beings in me over so. I've got a crystal source being. I've got a Lemurian eye priestess, which isn't as high as as the Raphael, but I prefer the feminine side, if you get what I mean, where Raphael's a male side. So to balance, I've got the energies of Raphael anyway, but get bringing the Lemurian, I've got both both ends of the stick, and also the dragons. I think the dragons are higher, higher vibration than angels, to be honest. Yeah. So it so seems that, that they are beings with duties. Uh, so, sentient life forms, yes, part of creation, yes, and they seem to have uh, duties of custodianship over different things. So, for yeah. example, Gabriel seems to, in among other things, as being a noble messenger and communicator, he seems to also be responsible for the cycles of time. I, I think he's like justice, to be honest. He's like the justice of... Uh... Yeah, call and upon so, him when you need some justice. Taking well. taking care of, let's say, the transition of uh, consciousness out of body and back in, again, uh, Israel. So many of them exist. They all have different duties of custodianship. Hmm. And some of them, of course, are guides, messengers from the beloved source. And these have visited people throughout history. Um, how to discern... Is there a quick way for, mm, well, I know the answer is probably no. There is no quick and easy way to do anything. Um, but is there a way to discern if a person is meditating and a being of a being of light comes, they, they're all pretty and shiny, to discern if this is true divinity or if it is a, a subterfuge, if it's a trick? My, I remember once chasing an archon, like you do. And they're very powerful beings, um, and all of a sudden, Poseidon was there with his like aqua glow, and his for and our uh, gut said, "No, this this is this is visualization from the ark, and they shape shifted into it, and they're showing me something I need to see, and then I, I decided now I'm going to kill this. <laughs> Not you do. Yep. So it's a gut. Your your own gut is probably your own art chakra. You go all this tells you." What you're seeing is true or not yeah is that what you winner do? Yeah. winner 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 yeah the heart ladies and gentlemen the power of the heart there is a flavor and an aroma an essence to true heart energy conscious love that is unmistakable if you shine this and it cannot shine this back there is something wrong and then the rest of the whole system will pick it up your gut feeling Something isn't quite right here. So if they're un uncapable of genuine love, then there is something probably you should investigate further. Or do as my esteemed colleague does, uh, chop their head off and ask <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've killed Poseidon. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wonderful. Oh, now, the Archons. Who are these guys? Uh, what what's their deal? Why are they even messing with humanity? Yeah, it, it's a strange one because you heard of the anarchy, and then yeah, the reptilians and the greys. I do do a lot of fighting for Orion, and Orion's very dark, dense energies, and you get like gooey spiders and gooey octopuses and all sorts of black, wonderful beings that tend to try and guard. When you've had something you shouldn't have had which I can't say here, they tend to guard the 11th chakra, which is your blueprint. So they're quite intelligent. What Arkans, I'm talking like someone in, in America now. I've never thought about that. I just know that they're the, like the main ones that run, uh, that run the reptilians and the greys here. They don't often come here. They're like the authority. Yeah. So. As far as I've seen, 
they seem to be sentient life forms not created by the source of this universe. Mm. Um, they are in fact uh, infiltrators into our universe. And so they have had um, success in taking over many other species. Uh, for example, many of the reptilians are under compulsion. In fact, they are they don't have free will. They are just obeying what they are forced to do. Their free will is taken out of the equation many times. So these seem to be governing uh, intelligences and in their realm and in within their creation, uh, there is strict uh, order. Uh, you wouldn't see that kind of harmonious flow like a flock of birds or like particles of dust f dancing in the air. It is all very, very, very strictly regimented. Uh, the best example of this would be um, the Borg from, um, from uh, what was it, Star, Star Trek? Star Trek, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I, like, so, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, the, I love that. So these are probably, you know, the writers were in contact with expansive reality. And then each one of these archons would be one of the queens. Mm. And so they have this compulsion for more and more and more and your in distinctiveness will add to our perfection and so therefore they're very very difficult to negotiate with uh, very single-minded once they have an objective they have very great ability to move the masses of the beings under their control so they're the ones that if uh, successfully eliminated there is a domino effect all those that are under their singular control are liberated Mm. So the Archon you took out, you basically collapsed an entire hive and perhaps rescued and liberated many species. Now, down the line, they will have a chance to heal and perhaps continue their own journey of evolution mm. for whatever possibilities that are presented to them. So that's my understanding of these guys. They're the, the high-ranking baddies. So if mm. they're messing with you, my dear friend, you have something very, very special. You've got the good <laughs> stuff. Or one thank, of them to come. No, thank you for that. It's so interesting. I'd never thought about that way where they're like hip, hip, hypnotizing the lower parasites, which is quite, quite, yeah, I get that. That's something many, I never thought about that. You know, yeah. Many of the reptilians that have made it to our world through certain glitches in the technological connection to the mm. hive mind have become aware of their enslavement. Mm. So they've I, snapped out. Yeah, I believe the Dracos were pulled, were, were, were evicted to here <laughs> by another race. <laughs> have, have you heard that? Yeah. They, I they, wouldn't be surprised. They didn't want to deal with the, with the incredible burden of re rehabilitation. They mm. said, off you go. And they looked at our universe like a, a dumpster. And that's yeah, why it, the world it, it was like it you've got you, you've got a bag of rubbish in your garden. I'll just throw it next door. Next door, and, and <laughs> no, who's next door? We're next door. <laughs> like what the actual hell, dude? Why? Yeah. And, and, so, yeah. and some and of the you know, some of the Draco are massive, thirty, forty foot. They're not small. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, they are very impressive. Mm. And well, they've gone through their own multi-billion-year journey of evolution physically and energetically very, very formidable beings intelligent mm. too mm, some of their mm, souls embody human vessels uh, so they can interact with humanity and so on just keeping mm. us under their thumb uh, and they manage to pull in more gifts than a typical human um, telepathy telekinesis uh, powerful healing mm. um, I, I've had the experience of interacting with a, a Draco queen um, and a very skinny, small lady with mm -hmm. psychic abilities like you will not believe, completely active. And so things seemed to fall in line for this young lady wherever she went. Uh, nothing could touch her. And it turns out she had three motherships uh, right above her, uh, making sure that she's okay. The purpose of which being uh, she was coming down here to do negotiations, they, went, they wished to uh, defect join divine evolution and so on so on that front i think there's a lot of positivity happening we i was part of a, a galactic mission on orion and uh we were fighting the dark queen 
which strangely as it seems that one of my aspects was Bali king of Orion <laughs> well you can't you can't help me who your aspects are but that war that battle was amazing and I, I actually uh, we zoomed it but we can't publicize it because it was that dark Orion people won't get it but yeah. so I'm not sure what the queen of Orion is what I'm not sure what being she is she could be Draco, but I don't think so. Yeah, she's an Orion. That's it. But Orion used to be a good place, didn't it? Yeah, it got taken over by the parasites, like like we're getting taken over or attempted. Not if, not if we mighty humans have anything to say about it. And mm. I think collectively we sell. Oh hell no! Uh uh uh. With the finger and neck movement associated. Uh uh <laughs> uh, uh uh uh. I don't think so. Uh, even. If there is one human liberated, there is always hope. And we are many, many pulling in powerful light from the beloved mm. source and our infinite soul and anchoring it into the earth. Uh, no matter how crazy things seem right now, well, we have to keep in mind we're going through the worst of the worst. But there is massive hope. I am incredibly optimistic that this is going to turn out to perfection. We are here because of these times anyway. So we were brought here because of these times. But what happened uh, in 2019, uh, I'd only just met uh, my partner, my new one. And I was I was having a dream, but I was astro-traveling. So it wasn't quite a dream. And next minute, the, all the clouds went red. And it was like a mouth in the clouds, and it was source. And he was saying that we, are, we have been planted like a seed on earth, in a spider's web to lift the vibration of the earth. And when I came back, I've, I've written I've written a little post on Facebook, exactly. And I f when I came back at 3 a.m., I phoned the partner. I said, just write this down because I won't remember it by morning. And she did it word for word, and I, I put it on my Facebook. But I was so high for a week to actually talk, Source had actually connected with me. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. One of the moments... Beautiful. If I could, could stay that I vibe, I would. <laughs> so, yeah. It's it's kind of tragic when one has to come back. Mm. So good. To help. Yeah, mm. yeah. But anyway, that's where we're all headed anyway. Yeah, mm. exactly. Uh, so... Um, Shall we bring it to a close? I think we've had an amazing have, have, discussion. Have you, got, have you got your runes with you? Yes, I do, sir. Can I give you three oracle cards and you give me three runes? <laughs> let's, let's do a spicy. <laughs> Tell us when. Yes. yes, please. you got to say yeah. i got to say what? Yes? Stop. Oh. Stop. No? Oh, uh, go, go, go. Stop. Yeah, I'll do three cards. Yes. Do you want to do mine first? <laughs> okay, let's cleanse these bad boys. Okay, good to go. Okay. What's this one wants to come out? Uh, Yera, uh, Fruitful Harvest the end of a cycle where rewards have been prepared and they are ready to go. Let's see. Uh, this one wants to come. Gebo, gift. What are you up to, man? Gift and fruitful harvest. Two powerful ones back to back. And then let's see. Mm -mm -mm. This one is shining. And Uruz, uh, speed, strength, and untamed potential. So... Fruitful harvest, gift and strength and speed. Something is coming which is a gift result of your own hard work. It is coming in fast and it is coming in strong. Whatever you've been doing, it's time to go boom. Very, very positive. Incredible. Well, I'm happy for you, man. Thank you. That's so interesting. Uh, the first card, from, this is the uh, this is healing with the angels. Yeah. I don't do the dark one. Well, the Alice Carver ones, anyway. Uh, first one is dreams. They're going to send you messages in your dreams. Keep a pen on the side, just in case, because we all forget our dreams. Yeah, I'll just. And the second card 
This is a romance card. So uh, about expect- any time, man. <laughs> <laughs> what's, fun- what's funny is it says you need a break from your journey like an holiday. I wonder if these two are the same, eh? Yes, which we all yes, just going on an adventure. And yes, oh, hey, an absolutely. Adventure. Yeah, so, I've got some you. holiday time coming up. <laughs> a break from it. You're doing a lot at the moment, so yeah, <laughs> we, could, we could always do a, a break. Oh yes, uh, beautiful. Yeah. I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank you so much. Do you want do you want two minutes of Ely? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Much Just gratitude. relax. And uh, anyone watching always gets it because I can't direct it very well. Holy shit, dude. Uh, <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm feeling giddy. <laughs> I can't go low damage. I've got to go the highest when okay. it's you. You know, I'm sure a download just popped in. I wonder what that was. It was it was cheesecake. The energy. <laughs> of cheesecake. Uh, you're making me laugh. <laughs> ethereal, ethereal, good stuff. I'm I'm feeling a euphoria. Oh my goodness! You you are one powerful, powerful being. And that's it. Is that good? That feels amazing. It's like a three-month holiday in a few moments. <laughs> really refreshing. Thank you, sir. And may I You're return my... the favor? Okay. <laughs> okay. <sighs> calling to my beloved, beloved source of all sources, calling for that which is appropriate uh, to this beautiful being with an overflow of blessings and may it wash across the cosmos. Going from your infinite soul coming into the branches of the soul star, overflowing, saturating with pure fresh light, light never used, never circulated or recycled, fresh light from source for the purpose of your healing your rejuvenation and enhancement coming into the soul star cleansing your bridge now gently and respectfully entering the crown filling the head with pure light washing the nervous system going down the spine every single nerve coming out removing any stress or anxiety from the body washing the crown third eye you've got some pretty cool tech man you're a wizard a wizard, a wizard, <sighs> going to the back of the head, jade gate clear, tiny, tiny clearing. You've been downloading very, very much, clearing the jade gate, vacuuming out what we broke, coming to your throat, <sighs> tiny, minuscule. There we go. Didn't take long whatsoever, vacuuming, coming down to heart, saturating this beautiful heart with pure divine love washing, washing, and then pushing what we're washing down. <sighs> Focusing with a hundred pairs of hands on the heart, supporting it and strengthening it, and now continuing to move down. Solar plexus, good. Moving down. Sacral, good. Root, incredibly powerful. Coming down, sides into the hips, going down the legs, knees, going down into ankles and feet, pushing into the earth bridge, cleansing the earth bridge and strengthening your connection and your ability to anchor more light into the planet. May it serve the highest good of all. Now calling to our beloved mother Gaia, calling in powerful blessings and healings from her and she is on board with it. She loves you, man. Pulling in your roots, 
guiding into your Earth star, and now pumping up the Earth bridge, up into the base of your feet, up, ankles, knees, into your hips, washing the roots, and then sacral, solar, and now placing another hundred pairs of hands with Earth's healing energy around your heart, supporting it, continuing to pump up energy, going up, up the neck, filling the head and washing it with this different vibration, uh, up the soul bridge into your soul star, pumping it powerfully through your infinite soul to the divine realm. And so we have connected heaven and earth. Kindly take three deep breaths and thus harmonize the flow. Next. And final one, please. Thank nice you. Me. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need that. I'm working overnight. I needed that. That was so good. I could see Maybe. at the beginning, I could see at the beginning like a saucer with a staff, with a glow coming off the staff. And then at the end, I saw you like a god, like a demigod on a, a big, king's sort of chair in gold did, did i have a big belly because wherever <laughs> i go the you know i oh man if i i'm so sorry this goddamn cheesecake if i eat one kilo of cheesecake i put on three kilos how is that fair there's a glitch in the matrix i tell you <laughs> well maybe we should actually give up this life of crime and be healers that's a thought. <laughs> that was great. I really enjoyed that. That was so good. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank my you. esteemed thank friend. You. Yeah. Okay. And and would you kindly add the link to the clearing um, uh, soundtrack that you have created? Uh, it, I can it, vouch it's, for... It, yeah, the, the old one's still there. I've still got, obviously, I'm still doing the other one, but it's getting there. It's nearly there. It's took okay. months. It's took three months to do. I know. This is a labor of passion and mm. love. So yeah. we'll try to include this in our f future uh, episodes uh, for the esteemed audience. The first one works powerfully. I can vouch for its um, immense effect. Mm. So thank you for that. Shall we close it with the Emmeline bowl? Just an excuse for me to try and learn. Yes, uh, man, I like your style. <laughs> yes, let's do this. Okay. Okay. I really enjoyed this one. This it's good. One. Uh, also, you know, we went to the direction of the taboo. And, and discuss things that people might have fear about. But there is no reason for fear. When there is clear no. knowledge, we make correct decisions. So Yeah, just be careful of tricks, the energies, feel your gut, and be, care be careful of energy vampires, that's all. But energy vampires tend to be old people. They tend to like a bit of energy. So <laughs> they, do, they do, don't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go. <sighs> Strong, strong, strong angelic presence. I think mm. that we're getting a wink from the universe that <laughs> we did well. Mm. They broke through finally. So may this sound be immensely healing and uplifting for everybody who hears it. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. I've really, I really enjoy our meetings. It's, <laughs> um, <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah. We get ourselves uh, the two... Um, wizards that are just sharing, sharing polite and friendly conversation once mm. again in this, in this, in these bodies in this lifetime. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's quite unique for me. This. So oh yeah, cool. me too. Me too. I, I, I've, I'm very, very grateful for your wisdom mm. and your time. Yeah, and yours as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you. So, uh, to be continued. And yeah. uh, yes, yeah. I hope you have a really, really wonderful evening. And you? Well, I'm working. So. Oh, well, uh, I'm, I'm off to work early, so I'm probably off to bed soon. So all the very best to you, my dear friend. 
Take care. Thank you. Take care. All the best. Bye for bye. now. Bye. <laughs>